Hi there, how's it hanging? I love you. Did you know that I love you so much, in fact, that today I bring you 100 Days in Vanilla Rimworld Expanded, even though this poll on the channel totally shows that nobody wanted it? Yeah. I love you that much. This playthrough, of course, is going to be heavily modded, and by that I mean there's a smorgasbord of vanilla expanded mods. Also, of course, there's an ungodly amount of hostile and friendly factions, as one might imagine. And we are starting out with one singular tribesperson who just happens to be a misogynist who is incapable of intellectual. So without further ado, let the good times roll. After cutting down a bunch of trees, it began to start raining, so we decided to build a small log cabin for our very first shelter here. The the cabin was leaky, it was shitty, and just all around, we really hated it, but for now, it was our home. As we continued our tree cutting escapades, I realized that Gray here was becoming a bit peckish. Thankfully, there was an apple tree not too far from our home, so we wouldn't have to go hunting tonight and the wildlife would be safe. For now. But just like that, day zero had come to an end. And like a flash, day one was upon us and it was still raining for whatever reason. But that was quite alright as we were planting our very first crop. Sweet, succulent onions. Of course, we don't want our onions to be all soggy and moldy, so we would also begin building a storage building to keep all our shit in. The very next day, we began deconstructing some slate runes nearby so we could use it for a campfire, which would allow us to finally butcher and cook this dead hedgehog that somehow is on the ground. Ah, uh, truly, is there anything more delicious than random dead animals on the ground? I think not. For quite a while, we would continue our tree chopping escapades because if we expect to create a proper home here, we're going to need plenty of resources, such as dead bunny meat and leather, or berries if you missed said bunny, maybe even the table of a long since forgotten ancient colony, a very handsome wooden stool, ooh, muy guapo, or possibly a stone slab bed made out of sli- hey, wait a minute, uh oh, this could be an issue. <laughs> you fools, did you really think we couldn't handle a little squirrel? On the bright side, at least the squirrel made good dinner. By day four, we had collected so much wood, I decided to build ourselves a semi-protective wall around the base. It was only made of wood, but it was better than nothing. I had also built embrasures into a few sides of the wall, that way we could ensure that we could shoot out when needed. As the day was winding down though, we had a doe fall from the sky from a transport pod. Being the kind tribes person that Gray was, he decided to begin tending to the doe and then take it all the way back home, put it next to the campfire so it could stay warm. And by morning, it ended up joining us. And we tied it up out back so it could eat some grass and heal. The very next day, we ended up having our first raid. It was nothing but a waster looking to get their heads stomped in, trotting around here with a hammer in their hands. And of course, with one singular arrow, we happily obliged. We came in to finish the job, but it turns out they had a crazy good intellectual skill, so we decided to kidnap them instead. We began mining out a very small hill for kitchen and food storage, although this didn't go on very long before we got the Chase Deserter quest, and y'all already know that I accepted that shit. I love a free person, especially when said person is carrying a smorgasbord of decent gear and weapons. Not long after he arrived, though, his pack of compadres was coming after him. He and Gray would quickly attempt to mount a defense to fight them off, but the Imperial soldiers were extremely fast, and at some point we had to hide behind our own buildings before trying to run away from them. Because to be honest with you, the only way I expected to win this was by running away. And for the most part, that seemed to work. As we were hiding next to the mountain, trying to heal ourselves, the raiders were destroying everything that we loved and burning our un crop. But then they got bored with that and decided to start trying to hunt us down once again. Gray hit the ground, but then our new compadre was still running. After killing one of them though, they decided to flee, but they were going to kidnap who they could and leave. So they tried to take Gray with him. But Gray had brass balls. He sprung to action and killed him somehow. And to be honest with you, that was probably one of the coolest spontaneous things I saw throughout this entire 100 days. And finally, the threat had been neutralized. And I know things seem a little bleak with all the fire and blood and whatnot, but let me assure you that nobody died. We would then continue our mining escapades into the mountain to try and build a beautiful dining hall and food storage area. And at some point it was sort of complete and they seemed to enjoy it. At one point we had an earthquake. Ah! But nothing actually happened, at least nothing that I could see. I assume this event takes place around a base, and when it happens, it destroys- I, I don't know. Something I do know, though, is we began building more walls to the south and to the southwest to try and better encompass our base. Some time later, we then had a blood moon, which also didn't really do too much in the grand scheme of things, except make the map look red. 
Pretty cool. Before day 25, I got a little bit bored and just decided to start building some roads to try and ensure maximum efficient walking speed or something. But hey, would you look at that? It's day 25 and in typical Rat Knight fashion, that means we're having a boss battle. But before that, really quick, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. To get a special discount and support the channel, click the link below or scan the QR code or go to HelloFresh.com and use code P-O-G-H-F-113. 189. Look, fall is obviously and objectively the best time of year, and I'm sure you, just as I, would rather be outside enjoying the cool weather and beautiful scenery. HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime this fall by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy-to-prepare recipes right to your doorstep. You can skip the checkout lines and get outside in the nice, beautiful weather and crunchy leaves because HelloFresh has dinner covered. Now, I and my lady rat personally love HelloFresh because of how extremely convenient the meals are. We both work full-time jobs and of course I run this channel which obviously doesn't give us much time together. We both love cooking together though especially when the meal doesn't take all evening so we can kick back and enjoy it while also enjoying some of our favorite shows and movies. Look spending less time in the kitchen is a goal of most people especially after a long day and you can spend less time in the kitchen with quick and easy meals like HelloFresh's classic beef chili ready in 30 minutes or less and it's also a perfect warm comfort food for this glorious time of year. If you're like me and you're not exactly a pro in the kitchen, HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. However, of course, HelloFresh is not just for dinner. In fact, HelloFresh has you covered for every mealtime occasion from snacks and easy lunches to even seasonal celebrations and festive get-togethers, which quite frankly is perfect because the next few months especially are littered with holidays. So be sure to sign up for HelloFresh today. I promise you will not regret it. They are absolutely amazing amazing. Be sure to also use the link below or the QR code or like I mentioned go to hellofresh.com and use code P-O-G-H-F-113-189. But once again thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. We ended up having an ancient bounty hunter from the ancient soldiers faction. Alright, let's slow our row. I know what you're thinking. Boring! Well, you are mistaken. This fella here is highly armored and also highly armed and is extremely dangerous. He was the bounty hunter for an ancient faction of warriors who went on to destroy worlds and galaxies. He would con- oh. Looks like we took him down. Well, unfortunately, that was easier than expected, but I guess the only thing left to do now is strip him of his armor and weapons and start beating him to death with a log. But hey, we got some pretty sweet-ass weapons and armor out of it. Things were finally starting to really look up for us, so much in fact that we also managed to recruit Madam. Then we built a small little box with a research table to shove her ass in until she got some research done. I want to note as well that we gave her expertise, which is added by one of the mods, to basically make them better at a certain skill. Then we ended up having a quest from someone who was running away from the toxic faction, so of course we accepted them and they joined us. She had some pretty good skills and she could also summon little creatures from her fingertips. The four of us made very short work out of the fools who were hunting her down. We needed some more room for all of our new friends, so we started building more walls to the north of our base. And of course, since we finally researched complex furniture, we could also build some shelves in our storage room. Then for a little while, I just kind of let the colony run on its own and just kind of checked back in periodically build some things, whatever they needed done. We ended up having the hunted royalty quest, which of course you know I accepted, but we didn't exactly save them. Later on we began having a beautiful lantern ceremony, but right slap dab in the middle of it, two of our pawns got to a fist fight, but they eventually stopped to watch the beautiful lanterns fly into the air. And apparently, regardless, the festival was very beautiful. The very next day, we finally finished electricity. We are now in the modern era. We would begin diligently working to try and eliminate electrify the entire base. Such means of infrastructure did take quite a while though. A few days later we had a trader come by and we made uh, a little bit of money. Some time later I realized that in the name of efficiency we should really try to join everyone's living quarters together that way it's more efficient for heating and just living all together. Our Imperial Knight slave apparently dropped some intel after losing his title. I didn't know much about it but it looks like it can be used for contraband items from deserters or gain access to quests and assassinations. It, it looks interesting. But my friends, in somehow, some way, shape, or form, we have managed to survive until day 50. Hurrah! However, 
You know what that means. Yes indeed, yet another boss battle. Now I'm assuming I don't have to explain how badass and dangerous these semi-cybernetic ancient soldiers and their massive mechanoid are, right? Right? Well, just take my word for it that they are extremely dangerous. I also wanted to quickly note that I put a death acidifier on them and I'm going to continue doing that for now on, simply because I don't want it to be unfair with us collecting their gear every time. Now these ancient soldiers were extremely agile as well, moving past the majority of our traps unscathed. We managed to kill one of them and injure another up until the point after that we ended up killing the other one and the only one that was left was the massive mechanoid. Now of course said mechanoid was not exactly a walk in the park but for whatever reason he kept getting distracted by beating up our generator or trying to melee attack us and in the end we ended up beating his ass. Now because of how dangerous that battle was and just how underprepared it made me feel I decided that we should probably use some other material to double up our walls. Now we didn't have a lot of stone so we ended up using steel. And of course speaking Speaking of steel, we used a whole shit ton of it to build a bunch of bear traps as well. And after a bit of research, we also cooked up some passive energy production in the form of solar panels. But you know, I was getting a little bit bored and I thought to myself, let's go on an adventure. Let's leave the colony for once and go do something. So there was an ancient complex nearby, so we decided to travel out and see what it had to offer. However, as we were on our way there, we ended up getting ambushed, although it really didn't matter. We shot them to death and then continued. Eventually, we had finally made it to the ancient complex and it didn't look too interesting. The items within were nothing too special either, a bit lackluster. We ended up receiving a little bit of fuel from the ancient complex as well as a gene pack for pig ears and a joy wire, with the joy wire being about the only interesting thing. So with our new mediocre items in hand, we began the long journey back home. Just after returning, our imperial slave decided to try and rebel, which was problematic, but we easily extinguished the flames of rebellion. Now the two are not directly related, but the rebellion did make me think that we should probably create some some type of prison for more prisoners that we take. And I found that the perfect spot for this would be the section where we mined out a bunch of steel already. A couple of days later though, we ended up having a manhunter pack of, get this, a bunch of good boys. Oh! Now, unfortunately, these good boys wanted to play fetch with our inside, so we had to take care of them. Now, these dogs were very ferocious and very persistent, I will give them that, but at the end of the day, we had to remind them that it was man who was created in God's image. So that and our opposable thumbs ended up winning this thing for us. Unfortunately, after this though, our imperial slave ended up coming down with a bit of malaria. We would try to smack some leaves on top of it to help him, but in the end, it really didn't matter because he developed immunity later on. I mean, I guess it did matter, but we didn't care if he died, so. Now, something that was a bit more important, thanks to our research, we were finally able to create a gun complex, which was perfect for our Imperial Slave because it wasn't a weapon that they could constantly carry around. It was kind of like a man turret. Actually, you know what? That's exactly what it was. We would also take the time to go ahead and upgrade this turret as well since Day 75 is creeping up on us. Before Day 75, however, thanks to the Faction War mod, we actually had two groups of tribespeople who arrived in our territory to fight. Now originally we were going to stay out of this fight but then I started thinking about how fun it would be to mow down the bad guys and we didn't stay out of the fight. Ah, nothing like some good old mob justice. But my friends, a few days later, after all that excitement was over with, it was finally day 75, and you know what that means. Yes, indeed, yet another boss battle. Now, I understand if you didn't really get to see our boss this time around, because they're extremely fast. And of course, there is a reason for all this speed. As you can see, our compadre here is decked out with several types of bionic body parts, as well as some really kick-ass gear. And his very fast warg companion also has power armor on. Surprisingly, the warg would enter our base, but we would make short work of it, and then the ancient soldier himself would attempt to enter the base, and we fired upon him with the hell fire of a thousand moons or something. And then he decided that he was going to try to run away with our gun complex, and he actually ended up getting away with it. But some time later, I told myself, damn it, Rat Knight, if we're going to make it to a hundred days, we need better defenses. So Madam here began researching her ass off, and eventually she came up with gun turrets. Now, I wanted to line the entrance of our base with a bunch of these turrets, but of course I didn't want to do a kill box because where is the fun in that? So I built kind of a semi half ass kill box where we could still get shot at and die. I mean, it's not technically a kill box, but it's pretty close. A prime example of how close this is to a kill box are these giant mud trenches that we also built in front of it to slow down our enemies. But a win's a win, baby. But now with that being said, we do need to diversify our recreation. Up until this point, 
like all we've had is a hoopstone ring and they go on walks and shit, so I decided to create this very depressing looking recreation room with a punching bag and a game of Ur. But now of course if that doesn't tickle your little fancy, I also built a grand piano in our dining room with a little nice bench. Later on we had some caravan animals enter the area, it was a bunch of alpaca with saddles apparently. Naturally of course I began checking their saddles, Oh, all you got some silver huh, that's okay. Yes, that's, that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. You know, I must say that I was a bit worried about doing a vanilla expanded video because I thought it might be a little bit boring and too close to actual vanilla, but this is super fun and also very relaxing. Minus the alpaca and this massive forest fire that's been going on for a few days. I mean, the fire wasn't that bad. Sure, our colonists are scared shitless and they're fighting for their lives to ensure that the base doesn't burn down, but, I mean, it could be worse. Ah, yes. Speaking of worst, I actually had an absolutely horrible idea. I had this ancient danger in the corner of the map and I thought to myself, wow, we should really crack it open. And as you're about to see, this was an absolutely horrible idea because the entire damn thing was stuffed with mechanoids. Unfortunately, as our colonists begin to flee, Madam was knocked down by one of the mechanoids. And unfortunately, our other colonists, as they were trying to flee, were under extremely heavy fire by the mechanoids. One of them was even chasing them down. Eventually, we did manage to take down that one specific mechanoid, but the others were still guarding the ancient danger and Madam. But then it hit me. Damn, Rat Knight, you fool! What have you done? <gasps> Wait a minute. Gray has a jump pack. And if we can utilize Gray's jump pack efficiently, we can jump in, save Madam, jump back out, and the mechanoids will never even know. Well, unfortunately, the mechanoids definitely knew, but that was okay because we did manage to get Madam out of there safely, and nobody else got hurt any more than they already were. Unfortunately, though, shortly thereafter all this went down, we ended up having a raid from the Toxic Faction. And I must say that it was this exact raid that made me so happy that we had made all of these military turrets right before this happened. Because if we had not, there is a a very high chance we would have got our asses smoked here and it would have been over. Truthfully though, there was still a slight possibility of that happening anyway, but thankfully we ended up killing enough of them, they began to flee. Interestingly enough as well, one of them had some really good fighting skills, even though he was staggeringly ugly, we decided that we would capture him. Besides, beauty doesn't dictate anything, we don't care how ugly he is as long as he's willing to die for us. That's all we ask. Yes, I'm aware that is truly a generous proposal, but anyhow, by this point, since we had so many weapons, like the new guns that we acquired from the waster pirates that we just managed to slaughter, we thought it high time that we get some sort of armory going so that those weapons aren't cluttering up our storage and also we have an efficient place to keep all of them so people can equip them when needed. So we managed to dig out one of the very small hills at the front entrance of our base to create a teeny tiny little armory. Then of course, after doing which we would bring all of the weapons from our warehouse into this new armory. And of course off screen I would actually equip some of our colonists with better weaponry since most of them are still using some outdated muskets or bow and arrow or something like that. Now in the final days leading up to day 100 I would also end up building a comms console as well as a orbital trade beacon so that we can actually trade with passing bolt goods traders and weapon ships and you know all that great shit. And now, of course, you may find yourself asking yourself, Rat Knight, why the hell are you doing all this if you only have a few days left before this challenge, this video, everything is up? Well, my friends, I'm not going to lie to you. I had so much fun doing this vanilla expanded video. Uh, if it does well and if you guys enjoy it, if you feel that it's something you would want to see, I very well may end up doing 200 days. If that does well, we may just continue this indefinitely until I can't stand it anymore or you can't. <laughs> but my friends, with that being said, said we have finally done it. We have achieved 100 days in Vanilla RimWorld Expanded. We have reached the end of the journey, at least for now. But of course, before we go, you and I both know there's one last thing we have to do. With it being 100 days, that means it's time for another boss battle. But you know, this time around, instead of creating something custom like the ancient soldiers, I decided to just spawn in a vanilla, good-sized raid from the Empire. 
Funny enough, the Imperial soldiers ended up spawning on the southwestern side of the territory, which means that they got into a little bit of a scuffle with the mechanoids that were giving us trouble. And kindly enough of them, they actually cleared out the mechanoids before coming to murder us. During this, our last raid of the video, I must say that our turrets pulled a lot of slack, as did our traps, up until one of the Imperial raiders ended up blowing up somehow, maybe some type of vest, but they really were helpful. Several of them ended up making it into the inner walls of the base where we would begin trying to fight them off as best that we could. We ended up killing several of them and eventually they actually began to flee and when they did so we tried to hide inside our recreation building. We did end up popping back out though in the last moments to try and finish off any stragglers that were trying to escape and break down our doors. But my friends, we have finally done it. 100 days in Vanilla Rimworld expanded and we have also defeated all four boss battles and or boss raids. But my friends, I just want to take a moment here once again at the end of the video and thank you ever so much for watching. This video has been a lot of fun. I will say I love doing these 100 days videos. Um, they're just very time consuming compared to like the episodes and stuff like that that I normally do. Um, you know, that's that's kind of my bread and butter here, but I do love doing the 100 days videos and it's not uh, necessarily me not wanting to take the time to do that. Um, it's just really I don't have that sort of time and I feel bad because it, you know, it takes me quite a while to do one of these types of videos and by the time I get it out, it's been, you know, a long time essentially since you guys have gotten any content from me and I just feel guilty. It makes me feel bad, but I love doing them so much and uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you guys want to see like a 200 days and stuff like that, if you want to keep this one going, uh, be sure to let me know in the comment section. Be sure to like the video and all the great stuff just so I know that that's something that you guys would like. But once again, my friends, I would like to thank you all ever so much for watching. I love you very, very much, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.